Hello everyone, my name is Simon, my pronouns are he, him, and I'm going to present this word that is called hiding the access pattern is not enough, exploiting search pattern leakers in searchable encryption. This joint work with Professor Florian Kurtzbond, and we are both working at the CRISP group at the University of Waterloo. Our motivation for our work is the following. Consider a user alias that has a data set, and in this case, it's three images that have some keywords attached to them. Imagine that this data set is privacy sensitive and also too expensive to store in Alice's phone. In that case, she would like to store her encrypted data set in the cloud provider with a service provider. We consider an honest but curious service provider that follows the protocol but might want to infer sensitive information about the user. Alice can encrypt her data set and send it to the service provider, but she also wishes to be able to query for the documents that have a particular keyword. In order to achieve this search functionality, she produces an encrypted search index and sends it to the server. There are many protocols to generate a search index. The simplest one consists on encrypting each keyword using deterministic encryption, and we call this encryption query tokens, and then sending the service provider a list of which documents should be returned when querying for a certain token. For example, in this case, if Alice wishes to query for the documents that have the keyword doc, she would encrypt the keyword doc and send this encryption to the adversary. The adversary would check this in the table and know that they have to return documents one and three. Then they would return these documents and Alice would decrypt them. During this process, however, there is some leakage. Most efficient searchable encryption schemes have two types of leakage. First, the access pattern leakage, which refers to which documents are returned as a response to a particular query. The adversary can use this access pattern to compute the keyword volume, which is the number of documents that match a particular query. In this case, the query token generated with the keyword doc, for example, returns two documents in response, and query tokens generated with cat and cow return a single document. Second, we have the search pattern leakage, which refers to leaking whether or not two queries are identical. The adversary can use this information to compute the number of times the user has queried for a particular hidden keyword, which we call the query frequency. This histogram here represents the query frequency of each of these query tokens. In this work, we are interested in query recovery attacks, which means that the goal of the adversary is to guess the underlying keyword of each query token. Existing attacks use either the query frequency or the keyword volume to recover the keywords of each query token. In this work, we propose a new attack called SAP for search and access pattern-based attack that combines both types of leakage. So the adversary has some observations from the queries Alice has sent, namely the frequencies and response volume for each of the query tokens. Additionally, the adversary has some auxiliary information regarding the query frequencies of actual keywords and the probability with which they appear in each document. We will see later how we generate this information, but we never give the adversary ground truth information. The adversary uses all this information to try to guess the underlying keyword of each query token. Our attack uses the following mathematical model to help matching the query tokens to the keywords. Given the oscillar information about the probability that a keyword appears in the document, the model assumes that each document in the dataset has a particular keyword independently of all the other documents and keywords. In this example, this implies that when Alice queries for the keyword dog and the adversary evaluates this query on the search index, the number of documents that match this query will follow a binomial distribution whose probability is given by the auxiliary data, which in this case is 50%. This mathematical model also assumes that the user queries independently and following the probability is given by the auxiliary information. Therefore, the number of times that Alice queries for each token will follow a multinomial distribution where the parameter is this probability vector. We know that this model is just a tool to derive our attack, and we do not generate the data set nor the queries following this model in our experiments. Our attack uses this mathematical model to perform maximum likelihood estimation. The estimator looks as follows. We look for the assignment of keywords to tokens P that maximizes the probability of the observations given the auxiliary information. So given the auxiliary volumes and frequencies on one side and the observed volumes and frequencies on the other side, we first compute the probability of each assignment. For example, this is the probability that a keyword that has a probability of 50% of appearing in each document and is queried on average 40% of the time has appeared in a single document and has been queried just once. We compute these probabilities for each possible assignment of keywords to tokens, 
and then we find the most likely assignment by running the Hungarian algorithm. One of the main advantages of this maximum likelihood approach is that we can easily adapt it against existing volume pattern defenses. So as mentioned before, our attack assumes that the number of documents that have a particular keyword follows a binomial distribution. So this defense proposed by Chen et al. adds and removes keywords at random from documents with some false positive and true positive rates. The resulting probability distribution of the volume of a keyword in the data set is also binomial, but with more variance and we represent it here compared with the original one. Patel et al. proposed to pad the keyword volume by adding Laplacian noise plus a constant, and this provides differential privacy. The distribution of the volume compared to the original one looks something like this. Finally, Demersis et al. proposed to pad the keyword volume to the next power of a certain value x, so that the volume distribution of a particular keyword will be discrete and will look something like this. We can adapt our attack against all these three defenses by simply plugging these probability distributions into the maximum likelihood estimator we saw earlier. For our evaluation, we consider two real datasets, Enron and Lucene. We randomly split each dataset into two halves and give the adversary one half as, as auxiliary information and use the other half as a true encrypted dataset. We extract the 3,000 most popular keywords from each of these datasets and get the query trends from Google Trends where each color here represents the trend of a different keyword. We run our experiments for 50 weeks. Each week, we generate the user's queries following a Poisson distribution whose rate is given by these trends. In order to give the adversary imperfect information, we give them the frequency trends with a five-week offset. We generate queries for 50 weeks with an average of five queries per week and consider different sizes of the keyword universe. These plots here show the attack accuracy, which we measure as the percentage of queries correctly guessed by the attack. The lines show the average of 30 runs, and the shaded areas are the 95% confidence intervals of that average. This parameter alpha is a parameter that allows us to tune how much weight the attack gives to the volume and frequency information. So alpha zero is we only give volume information to the attack, and alpha one is we only give frequency information to the attack. This plot shows that by combining volume and frequency information, the attack is way more successful than when taking just one type of information into account. Each color here represents the results for a different size of the keyword universe, and we see that it is harder to estimate the true keywords when there are more keywords to choose from. In this plot, we compare the performance of our attack, which is in blue, with a frequency attack by Liu et al. and the graph matching attack by Paul Liu and Wright. We consider a keyword universe of 500 keywords for this experiment, and use alpha 0.5 for our attack. We vary the average number of queries per week and the data sets in each group of boxes. We see that our attack outperforms the others and it's very close to the graph matching attack in the Enron data set when the number of queries per week is large. The red crosses show the running time which is displayed in the right Y axis. This axis is in logarithmic scales and it shows that our attack is approximately two orders of magnitude faster than the graph matching attack. The reason why we performed this experiment with 500 keywords and not 3,000 was actually because the graph matching attack would be infeasible to run in that case. Therefore, we can conclude from this experiment that our attack outperforms the other attacks. Next, we evaluate the performance of our attack against the volume padding defenses that we saw earlier. CLRC is the defense that adds and removes keywords at random for each document. The first group of boxes represents the performance of our attack without a defense. Again, each color is the performance for different keyword universe sizes. For the next group of boxes, we evaluate CLRC with increasing false positive rate for the defense. More false positive rate means more protection. The black triangles represent the performance of our attack when it is not adapted against the defense. And we see that in that case, the defense is highly effective since it makes the accuracy almost zero. However, when we adapt the attack against the defense, which is shown in the boxes, we see that we are virtually bypassing the defense because increasing the false positive rate barely decreases the attack accuracy. The results for the Laplace noise are very similar, even when configured with high values of the differential privacy parameter. SEAL, however, proved to be a significantly stronger defense. We see that the attack accuracy decreases as we increase the privacy parameter. Also, the red crosses in these plots show the bandwidth overhead that results from padding the volume of each keyword. We see that for a certain bandwidth overhead, SEAL is the best defense strategy because it reduces the accuracy the most. To conclude, we have proposed a new attack that we have shown is efficient and strong. 
we have seen that combining volume and frequency leakage is very effective. And also that volume padding strategies are in general not very effective against our attack seems we can adapt it against these defenses. Therefore, hiding search pattern and query frequency is very important. Recently, there have been some new words that either hide the query frequencies like Pancake or somehow hide the search pattern like OSSC and SWC. We think these schemes are moving in the right direction and are promising, and we would like to study if we can adapt our attack against them in the future. Uh, this concludes the presentation. Uh, thank you for listening, and we will be happy to take questions.